So tell us what traditional urban planning gets wrong that all of these new tools for envisioning what future cityscapes mm -hmm. will do can get right. Well, I think the most important thing it gets wrong from my perspective is it doesn't model human dynamics. Mm -hmm doesn't model the interaction of people. Uh, we're now, this model right in back of me is of Candle Square. As you may know, MIT has been designated the developer of this 14 acre parcel mm -hmm. that has the potential for totally transforming Candle Square into one of the great innovation places on the planet. Mm -hmm. I believe that it will only do that if we really understand what the in interventions uh, will mean with respect to the exchange of ideas and how where human people beings gather, actually live, how, how they, they live, how, how they, they work, learn. You know where good ideas actually happen, which typically is not in the workplace. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it might be in a bar. <laughs> you know? Sure. And uh, you know, so we're we're deploying but, but this problem. This just a, just a, sure. the problem of thinking about buildings as buildings rather than thinking about how they wrap around people and they change our That's lives. Right. It's, it's been a pervasive problem, not just in urban planning, but in architecture, Absolutely. right? I mean, it's, it's, it's I think, one of the sort of central things is forgetting Absolutely. that the real city is humanity, yeah. not the, not the yeah. structures that surround it. Absolutely. Them. So you ask why we use Lego bricks. That's another reason, because we think of it as pre-architecture, mm -hmm. you know, pre-urban planning. We're, we're modeling the performance of the city with respect to the metrics that typically urban planners don't consider. They may well want to consider them, but they don't have the tools right. to actually model them. So we're trying to build those tools. So what does this mean for Kendall Square as you think about it? How, how, how does this approach to Kendall Square create a different square than you would if you took a traditional planning approach? Well, the, norm, the normal way that a developer would approach this is they would, they would look at return on investment. What, mm -hmm. what is the highest and best use of that property in terms of returns? And in Kendall Square, that's going to be corporate office buildings and mm -hmm. laboratories. If you come at it from, by asking, rather than what's the best return on investment, what's best for the community, mm -hmm. then you, you end up realizing that we need to have diverse housing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and by the way, the inclusionary housing laws, I think, were okay 30, 40 years ago but they don't work for a place like Kendall Square. Because what you end up with is housing for rich people and a little bit of housing for sure. poor people, but you don't end up with housing for young professionals or families or elderly people or workforce, mm -hmm. people that might actually you know, work in the district uh, doing under, you know, tasks other than just high-tech mm -hmm. jobs. And I, I think there are ways of deploying good public policy and good design and proper incentives so the developer can still make the profits they need to make, sure. but the community gets what it needs to have a healthy, high-functioning, live-work community that really does enable innovation. Right. And, well, and that's what we're trying sure. to model. Better. So how does, that, how does that work into your models? How do you think about bump rates? And, well, I and think if you, if we, the way we think about the innovation potential is, is that if you accept, and I think the, the, the evidence shows, that most good ideas happen outside of the workplace, mm -hmm. before or after, that you really want people exchange, having the opportunity to exchange ideas over an extended period of time. If you're commuting in every day and leaving, then you, you lose those opportunities. And having a grocery store mm -hmm. is, is really essential to create that kind of 24-7 mm -hmm. environment. How do you change the, the physical layout of streets to make them more innovation friendly to be make them more well you you design situation. them for people not machines and what does As, that mean tangibly? well What's for that? one thing you need to get rid of the machines mm -hmm. <laughs> so so you uh, I think if if you design a community where people can walk to most of what they need mm -hmm. in daily life you know with within a maybe five to ten minute walking distance then you can have the kind of vibrant streetscape that mm -hmm. is for people if you have you know, a lot of car traffic. Then, obviously, streets are not are not for people. If so, the the opportunities I think that we're investigating is what happens when humans are not behind the wheel of conventional cars. Mm -hmm. Con conventional cars that add autonomy to it, privately owned cars are probably a step backwards for the city. Because mm -hmm. if you look, at, if you model what might actually happen, it increases the trips and the mm -hmm. time on the street. If you move towards 
very lightweight autonomous vehicles that move people and acknowledge that most trips in the city are short distance, low speed, one person, mm -hmm. then you design a vehicle that's appropriate for short right. distance, one person, right. slow speeds. Right. And that means that the pathways for vehicles can shrink mm -hmm. with the same throughput, the through, same throughput of humans, and that then expands the people's space so you can have cafes and restaurants and places to gather and exchange ideas, and the net result is that increases the innovation potential.